What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here, as always, on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to be discussing from 2011, Tactical Force, starring Stone Cold Steve Austin, Michael Jai White, Lexa Doig, Steve Backick, Candice Elaine, Michael Shanks, and Michael Eklund. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me today here once again for another brand new episode of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the intro, I'm going to be discussing my final feature for this month from Stone Cold Steve Austin, Tactical Force. And our film begins with a grocery store robbery. A group of masked men are robbing the store and they take some customers as hostages. Um, very much similar to the ex-presidents in Point Break, but they're not all presidents. Like one has a Barack Obama mask, but another guy's got like a killer clown mask. So the same general concept without it being themed around presidents. L.A. SWAT comes in to deal with the hostage situation, and Captain Tate, Stone Cold, and his crew enter the store to handle the situation at hand. Afterwards, Tate's team, which includes Hunt, Blanco, and Gennard, commend each other on a job well done. However, the LAPD chief chastises the team for the destruction they caused, which has brought lawsuits against the city and the department. He suspends them without pay and orders them to be retrained, as well as assigning them a class with the FBI for further sensitivity style training. As they begin their retraining, none of them take it seriously. Even Tate, the leader, is cracking jokes, thinking it's a dumb thing that they have to do. Meanwhile, there's a duo of Demetrius and Ilya, and they've taken a man named Kenny hostage. Now, Kenny has an item of importance and has hidden it in an old abandoned building. Demetrius wants it back. Now, I'm just going to get this out of the way here. We never learn what the item is. It's always just kind of referred to as the item. At one point, the briefcase that it's in is opened, and you see what's inside, or they see what's inside, but like we never really get a really good look as to what it is they've been after this whole time. So I'm sorry if I can't give too much more description on that. Now, Demetrius, though, he isn't the only person after the item. Another duo of Lampone and Storato are also after the item in Kenny. Vampone finds Demetrius and Kenny at the abandoned building, and they, along with Ilya and Storato, all pull their guns for a standoff. Demetrius asks for a temporary truce, and he wants to speak with Lampone. Now, during the truce and their discussion, they begin to hear sirens in the distance, and they begin to get paranoid because they think that the other team has called the police on them. What they don't know is that Tate and his team are coming to that same abandoned building to proceed in exercises and drills for hostage takeover situations. There's cardboard, you know, paper cutouts hung on an upper level floor of a shooter and two hostages. And they've got to go through these drills as part of the training that they have to do. So, and they, Tate's crew believes that this building is going to be empty because the police department has rented it for these drills. Now, as Tate's team runs their exercises, Demetrius, Ilya, Rampone, and Storato hear the gunfire from downstairs. 
they assume that SWAT has just killed someone. And then they start to even get more paranoid. But Storado, he's trying to get fresh with Ilya. She defends herself first by throwing him headfirst into a car window and then into an oversized freight container. Tate hears the noise from downstairs, and he sends Blanco to check it out. Because, like I said, the building is supposed to be empty and all theirs. When Blanco gets close, Storado comes out and shoots him multiple times. It knocks him down, but it doesn't kill him because of the bulletproof vest that Blanco is wearing as part of his equipment. Ilya then comes from around the container and puts a bullet straight in Blanco's head, killing him. Tate, Hunt, and Janner go to investigate, but by the time they get down to the lower level, the bad guys have the upper hand. See, they've gotten a hold of Blanco's weapon, checked it out, and they see that it's loaded with nothing from but blanks. So they've come to the realization that the police that are in the building are just running drills. All their magazines are going to be pumped with blanks. Therefore, if they get shot, they're not going to die. So when... Tate and his crew get to the bad guys and try to apprehend them. The bad guys refuse because they know the situation. They tell Tate flat out, we know that you're pumping blanks right now. Tate, realizing the situation that he is, has his crew retreat so that nobody else passes and perishes when they don't need to. Now, as Tate, is, Tate and company try to come up with a plan, Ilya goes out and grabs their SWAT van with all their equipment and their actual live round ammunition and brings it back inside the building. Now, in theory, in order to get to their van, they've got to go through the bad guys. Demetrius calls his associate Vladimir to come and help with the situation because they're still trying to get this item from Kenny. Vladimir arrives and his team climb a ladder and enter an upstairs window. And they're searching for Tate and the rest of his crew. Demetrius, Ilya, Lampone, and Storado are all waiting outside. Kenny's tied up in the SWAT van inside. Tate's going to seize this opportunity. There's nobody near the SWAT van, and he doesn't know about Kenny yet. So Tate rushes the van to try to get supplies and live ammunition for the situation. Hunt is able to take a member of Vladimir's team out in the stairwell while Jannard encounters Vladimir upstairs. And when Tate returns with the supplies, he rushes upstairs to help Jannard as he doesn't want to lose another team member. Like I said, they've already lost Blanco. Don't want to lose anyone else. Tate kills Vladimir while Hunt and Kenny head upstairs to meet up. Lampone then gets angry because Demetrius has allowed them to lose Kenny the one man who knows where the item is. And just then, some pe some associates of Lampone's shows up. As Lampone's associates storm the building, looking for Tate and the rest of his team, Kenny shows Tate and company a secret exit. And they take a series of maintenance tunnels heading for a crash building. While making their way through the tunnels, Hunt thinks he hears something from behind them. So Tate leaves the group to go check it out. Lampone sends Serato and some of his other men in to help try and flush out Kenny. And they end up returning to Lampone with Hunt, Jannard, Jannard, and Kenny. Hunt gives the briefcase that's supposed to have the item to Lampone, 
but the briefcase is empty. The item is missing. Demetrius and Ilya have gotten Tate. And Tate has the item now that everyone is looking for, but Kenny doesn't know this. And with Kenny no longer of value, due to him not having or knowing where the item is, Lampone kills him. Which Lampone has been wanting to do for a long time, because Kenny is just one of those annoying characters that gets on your last nerve. So Lampone has been waiting for an opportunity to kill Kenny. Like I said, when he's no longer useful, he took that opportunity. Lampone then turns his attention to Janard, and he asks her where the item is. And she begins to answer, but he starts to get the impression that she's just telling him whatever it is that she thinks he wants to hear in order to help save her life. Hunt and Storato end up going back into the tunnels in order to retrieve the item, while Demetrius, Ilya, and Tate, who's formed a temporary alliance with them, attempt to take out Lampone's associates. See, they had captured Tate and had him tied up, but when the firepower started to grow in their direction, he told them, hey, untie me, give me a gun. Hunt and Storato end up engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the tunnels, and Hunt claims victory when he's able to kill Storato. And when Hunt returns, he's able to get the drop on Lampone and takes him into custody. Tate, Demetrius, and Ilya return to the building, and the shootout continues. Hunt fires a grenade at Lampone's associate's van and basically blows away all the associates, except for maybe one. Demetrius then turns on Tate and takes his team into custody as hostages. So now you've got Jannard, Hunt, and Tate all captured, and Demetrius makes them get down on their knees, hands behind their head. They bring Lampone in and put him down on his knees also. Demetrius then leaves Ilya in charge, thinking that gunfire is going to be going off any minute and all these people are going to die. So Demetrius steps outside for a smoke, and when he doesn't hear gunfire, he ends up going back in. He finds that Lampone has taken control of the situation, and Ilya is now dead. Lampone is ready to start offing Tate and his crew, but Tate makes a final request. He asks if his team can put earplugs in. And Lampone thinks it's an odd request, but he goes ahead and grants it. So Tate, Hunt, and Jannard put earplugs in, and then Tate drops a flashbang grenade, which doesn't kill anybody, but it just smokes and makes a loud noise, enough to cause a distraction so that they can get up. During the explosion, the bad guys scatter. Tate chases after Lampone and his last remaining associate. And after an intense hand-to-hand -hand fight, Tate kicks the man and he falls on a pole, impaling himself. When the smoke is cleared and everything is done at this abandoned building, Tate, Hunt, and Jannard return to the chief. And the chief brings in Kenny. First of all, Kenny didn't die like everyone thought that he did. He tells them that they saw what he wanted them to see. And secondly, it's revealed that Kenny is in the FBI. He had been deep undercover for five years trying to get a hold of this item, bring these true crews together, 
so that he can either bring them all down or kill them. The three surviving officers are declared officers of the year and heroes as our film comes to its conclusion. This was a good one for Stone Cold. I seem to see a lot of similarities through a bunch of his films. I have to say out of the ones that I reviewed of his during this past month, I think Knockout was my favorite. It's de definitely the one where I saw the most different, you know, from what you'd expect from Stone Cold. It was the most heartfelt of the series. When it comes to my rating of this one, though, it wasn't a bad film by any stretch of the imagination. And I do like Michael Jai White. And getting to see him use his martial arts in some of the fight scenes was really cool. I'm going to give this three and a half out of five stars. It was a solid flick, but like I said, a lot of Stone Cold's movies are very much in the same vein. So I start to get to the feeling where if you've seen one of his, you've pretty much seen them all. Cast may change, setting may change, but they're all very much cookie cutter films. Don't forget to get out there on social media. Hashtag Casa de Teen Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews, Hashtag Renegade Returns, and of course the ever popular Hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Statboy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you come back tomorrow right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews when I tackle the final Hulk Hogan film for this month, The Ultimate Weapon. Hopefully that'll be a good one. I'm eager to see what the Hulkster has in store for us tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Leave your thoughts in the comment box below. As always, I might just read one of your comments on Tuesday's edition of Renegade Recap. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you all next time.